Okay, we have a 2013 uh, Chevrolet Silverado. Has the 5.3 engine in it. And if you ever, just a quick tip, if you ever want to know for sure what year you're working on, most vehicles, if you look at the uh, data plate under the engine for the uh, for the engine specs, it not only tells you the engine size, you know, right here is 5.3, but it'll also tell you what year it conforms to and that's the year that you want to go by so this is 2013 a lot of times if you look at the door jam uh, sticker and I don't know I don't know what this one's going to say but let's take a look um, okay see this is 1112 so a lot of people could look at that and think that it's a 2012 but it's not it was built on uh, November of 2012 but it's a 2013 uh, year model so if you ever get confused on that uh, I like to go by this placard right here because this is what's going to be the, the basically the final say as to what year if you go into an auto parts store this is what you're going to want to tell them you've got so if you're ordering a part for a vehicle this is the year you're going to want to uh, tell them and I don't know how that, that's coming through but this on a GM they're, they're all similar uh, but that's the year and what we're going to be doing to this vehicle um, it, it's got it, it runs great but it's got some O2 codes that are popping up the O2 sensor has been replaced um, and after a little while of driving you know uh, a month or so uh, the, the check engine light will come on and when you scan it it's the same O2 sensor and it's uh, what it is is code uh, PO15D Delta and what that is is a slow response from lean to rich and it's the first it's, it, it's all that that particular code is always going to refer to the first O2 sensor which is before the catalytic converters it's the one that's that's right basically the first one that the exhaust hits um, and then of course whichever bank in this case it's bank two which is the passenger side so what we're going to do real quick we're just going to do a fuel injection balance test and I'm going to show you how to do that using the Autel scan tool um, you need a scan tool to be able to do this. It, it actually puts the, uh, it has the, the, the PCM pulse the injectors a certain, uh, an exact certain amount of time, and you watch the uh, uh, pressure drop. And if you, ha what you're looking for is an exact amount of pressure drop across all fuel injectors. So if you have one out of the eight injectors that either drops way more than the others that's a, considered a leaking injector so it's going to pass more fuel whenever the computer's pulsing it it's going to pass more fuel into the cylinder than what it should if it doesn't drop uh, as much as the others then it's not going to be able to pass as much fuel into the cylinder so the computer will pulse it thinking that okay I'm pulsing it you know at uh, 14 millisecond rate and uh, so I should be dumping a certain amount of fuel in there but if it's not if it's partially plugged or it's leaking it's either going to pass more or less fuel than what it should and that can cause O2 codes to set because the engine could actually be running lean or rich um, not enough to set a rich or lean code but enough to where the computer thinks the O2 sensor is basically getting lazy and not responding quick enough. Uh, since the O2 sensor was replaced on this, uh, we're trying to rule out whether or not the O2 sensor that was replaced may be uh, having the same issue, which is to me very unlikely, but that is actually still a possibility. It's an aftermarket O2 sensor. Um, aftermarket stuff depending on the manufacturer sometimes just isn't isn't as good as the OEM so it could still be an O2 sensor but we want to roll out uh, in this case the injectors 
and make sure the injectors are uh, are all working equally as good, specifically the injectors on the passenger side. Um, the nice thing about these GMs, first thing you're going to need to do is hook a fuel pressure gauge up. The nice thing that GM does is they put a Schrader valve right here on the fuel rail. So uh, most fuel, fuel injection pressure test kits have, have a Schrader valve that will screw right onto that. That way you don't have to break no lines loose. You just take the cap off, screw it right on there, and you're good to go. You got your, you got your pressure at your fuel rail whenever the fuel pump's running. And it's very handy for monitoring fuel pressures and making sure that those are good. So let me get the scan tool over here. I've already got it set up for uh, this truck. And uh, we'll kind of go through this and, and we'll analyze it. Okay. Now the key needs to be on, of course. You got the scan tool hooked up. Key's going to need to be on. Uh, fuel pressure gauge is going to need to be hooked up. When I, when I hook the fuel pressure gauge up, I turn the key on and it did instantly build fuel pressure, which obviously is what you want to see, and it's holding the fuel pressure. Fuel pump's not running right now. That's what you want to see. You want to see the, the uh, that tells you the check valve and, and the, the fuel pressure system, the fuel injection system as far as it holding fuel pressure when the car is off is is good sometimes you'll see that drop all the way down that's that's not good you got you got an issue if you see that so so I've got the scan tool pulled up here we're in the uh, ECM section we're gonna go to special function uh, yeah special functions I believe right here fuel injection balance um, make sure all fuel lines are connected. Connect fuel pressure gauge to fuel line. Uh, each fuel injector can be flowed slash pulsed once per ignition cycle only. So we're going to go to OK. So here we go. We're going to uh, we're going to hit. We're going to select injector one to start with. Okay, fuel pump just kicked on and it built our pressure up. And then it pulsed the injector a certain amount of time. Now it's dropped at 35 pounds. Okay. If you're seeing that, hopefully I'm trying to get the glare out of it. So it dropped to 35 pounds. So um, we're going to go to OK. We're going to go to injector two. Fuel pump to kick on to build the pressure back up. It's going to pulse the injector. Okay, this one dropped, uh, it's about 33. Injector 3. And you just do this for all injectors. Okay, that one was about 33. Do injector 4. So far, the, the very first one dropped to 35. All the others are hitting 33. Seven. And 33. So I'm going to cycle the ignition. Actually, I'm going to start it. Remember, you are injecting raw fuel into the cylinder. I'm going to start it up real quick. Maybe. Q. 
keys back on. I want to do that again for some, for the very first injector. You don't want to continue to do this because, like I say, you're injecting raw fuel into the engine, and you could hydro lock the engine whenever you go to start it. So uh, that's why it took a while to start. It was flooded. So what I did to actually get it to start, it probably would have started if I just would have continued to do that, but I pushed the pedal to the floor and put it in clear flood mode, and that uh, reduces the, the injector pulse width. Uh, to where it's barely shooting any fuel into the cylinders. So let's go ahead and do this again. We're going to do this for just for just injector one. I want to see if injector one is going to go to 35 again. Okay, 33. So. That's good. So all eight injectors went to 33. It dropped from about 60, which is where the, when the fuel pump kicks on, uh, you get your you hit your max pressure of in this case 60. And uh, whenever it pulses the injectors, it, it is like I say it's a perfectly timed. Uh, I don't know if it's 500 milliseconds or what. Uh, I had an old uh, injector pulse tool that was just a standalone tool that you had to connect to each injector and you could pulse them and it was a 500 millisecond pulse. This sounds like it's probably a little bit more than that but I, I don't know what it is. That's that's all built into the, the actual computer of the vehicle and then the scan tool just activates it. But all eight of them look like they dropped to 33 which tells me all eight injectors are performing pretty much spot on with one another. So I can kind of rule out whether the injectors are the problem uh, with this deal. But the whole scope of this quick video is to show that function of performing an injector. If you're suspecting an injector issue, that's how you can determine whether you have an injector that's dirty or sticking or not working at all. Obviously, if there was an injector that wasn't working at all, then, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't have pulsed whatsoever. It, you wouldn't have heard. I, hopefully, you guys heard the, the pulsing of the injector, that clicking. That's the injector pulsing, you know, uh, on and off. But, anyway, this is the Autel MS906TS. Any of the Autel Maxisys uh, scan tools will be able to do this, along with a lot of other scan tools, you know, the launch, the snap-on, uh, they all have this feature. Not all manufacturers offer this feature, but GM does offer this feature. Uh, and like I say, on most GM vehicles, you're going to have a Schrader valve, so you can hook your test kit uh, straight up to the, to the port. If you don't have a Schrader valve, most vehicles, if you buy a good kit, I don't know if you can see the uh, let's see, that's, uh, see that connector right there, that fuel line uh, with a spring lock connector. You would disconnect it there, and they come with different. Uh, this one doesn't have the right one, but you'd have a, uh, a, a, a an adapter that would snap into that. Basically, putting a T, and then your fuel line would screw into into that port right there. So, GMs have the Schrader valve, which is very, very good. Anyway, that's about all I'm going to do on this video. just wanted to show you that. I just wanted to verify that all eight injectors are good. They are. Um, and like I say, that very first time that we did the first one, could have been because the key was on for a while. Some of the fuel pressure bled off. And... Uh, even though the, the fuel pump kicked on and brought it up and it sat there for a while and that could have thrown it off. So I wanted to redo the, the injector number one again just to verify that it was going to uh, function just as equally as the other seven. And they did. I'm happy with all eight injectors. Even if you're, a, you know, a, a pound, you know, if, if one of them dropped to 34 uh, pounds versus 30, uh, 35 that's probably still going to be close enough to where you're not going to have any issues. Um, 
I don't know exactly how far off as far as, uh, you know, what it would have to be before it really started causing uh, drivability issues. For instance, if you had seven of them that, that dropped to 35, and if you had one that went to 30, that for sure is too much of a difference. That one that goes to 30 is a leaking injector. It's, it's allowing more fuel to pass the uh, pentel than the others are. So that injector is going to cause that cylinder to run rich. So just keep that in mind. The pressure should be almost spot on with one another. Anyway, I've babbled enough. You guys take care. Just another real quick tip that I wanted to throw out there. Another thing, the very first thing that I, that I wanted to see when I hooked the pressure gauge up was how fast the fuel pressure come up. When you turn the key on, the fuel pump kicks on for a couple seconds, and then it'll shut off. You want to see that fuel pressure come up rapidly. You know, to that 60 pounds, it needs to come up very, very fast. That tells you your, your, your fuel filter uh, is not uh, restricted, and the fuel pump's strong. Uh, if it comes up real slow and sluggish and takes a while to finally get to the 60, uh, you either got a uh, fuel filter plugged up, you got a fuel pump that's weak, um, or other issues. The two most likely are fuel filter plugged um, and fuel pump is weak. But in this case, it come up nice and fast. So that tells me that the fuel pump's fine, the fuel filter's fine. And uh, then at that point is whenever I did the, the injector balance. So look at that too. Whenever you hook a fuel filter or fuel gauge up, make sure your fuel pressure comes up nice and fast. And you need to know what it's supposed to come to. I haven't looked, but 60 is right around the ballpark that these should be operating. Most uh, fuel injected vehicles are right around that mark, 55 to 60 pounds. Uh, give or take a few pounds. If this only went to 30, uh, I would definitely have a problem with that. I, I would have had to look and see what it is exactly supposed to be to see how far off it is. Um, you know, if it only came up to 40 even, I would have had to look it up. That's still too low. I, I like to see 50, 55, 60 to feel confident that that's pretty close to what the pressure should be. But if you want, if you need to know exactly, depending on what kind of drivability problem you're having, you need to get in the book and make sure that you know what the uh, fuel pressure is supposed to be in the vehicle. That way you know whenever the you see it on the gauge, you know if it's actually, you know, correct or not. But uh, I'm confident 60 PSI is pretty close to where it should be on this vehicle. Anyway, you guys take care.